No, I can't. I will have to do this. And I can, yes, that Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Shelbyville First United Methodist Church. Welcome to those joining us on Facebook and on the radio. 
I am Pastor Abe, and I'm so glad that you are able to be with us here today. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we're also observing Baptism of the Lord Sunday. And so toward the end of the service, there will be an invitation to come forward and to remember your baptism or reaffirm your baptism. We'll have an invitation to, to reaffirm our baptismal vows today, if you'd like to do that. And so those of you on, online at home, you know, go ahead and get a, a bowl of water, and you would dip your finger in and make the sign of the cross on your forehead or the back of your hand if you'd like to participate in that part of the service. And I look forward to that today. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. John for our announcement. Thank you, Pastor Abe. Good morning, everyone. Please register your attendance in the red pads if you haven't done so already, and please pass it to your neighbor in your pew. If you're a visitor, we're so happy you're with us today, and if you wouldn't mind, please filling out one of our visitor cards and putting it in the plate a little bit later in the service. The chancel flowers are presented to the glory of God. We also this morning have a white rose, and it is in memory of our dear member, Shirley Nicholson, who recently joined the church triumphant. We also, you may notice in the bulletin, we are in need of liturgists and folks that can provide the altar flowers uh, for the rest of January and all of February. So if you feel led to lead, to uh, serve in that way, uh, please sign up. I believe there's a sign up outside the nursery in the hallway. Also, tomorrow, the outreach team will meet at 4 p.m. And tomorrow at 5.30 will be the first uh, adult handbell practice of 2023. And then we have one special announcement here. Um, back in November, when the UMW Bazaar took place, there was one item that was not ready for, to be sold at that time, but it is ready now. John Carney's special hot sauce is available in the Narthex for $10. You can see Rayetta for that. The proceeds would go to the UMW Bazaar. Ms. Wilma. Please stand as you are able as we share responsibly our call to worship, which you will find posted in your bulletin, on the screen, or on our church website. People of the world, it is time to celebrate new beginnings. We step into the new year with faith. People of faith, it is time to look ahead and hope. We step into the unknown with hope. People of hope, it is time to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We step forward together as God's family. And at this time, we invite our, our children that come forward for the children's moment. And then afterward, they'll be dismissed for children's church. Come on down. Or come on up. Good morning. All right. Is that you gonna help me? All right. So, how many of you made New Year's resolutions? Yeah, you may out there. How many of you have already broke those New Year's resolutions? <laughs> so this year, I decided to pray about it and see what God wanted from me to make my resolution. I didn't want to make a ridiculous goal like losing 100 pounds or, you know, even though I might need to. But I wanted to be a better Christian, so I sat down and I prayed about it. When I started praying, God revealed several things to me. One, I tend to make things way harder than they need to be. My husband will confirm that. <laughs> Sharing God's love is simple and not complicated. Right? It's easy to share his love. 
So, number two, I have everything I need to do what he has called me to do. And number three, I need to trust God to do what only he can do. All right? So those are all things that we can work on. All right? So starting today in Children's Church, we're going to start a project that's going to take time, but I think that you will enjoy it. We're going to start planting little seeds of God's love wherever we go and invite everyone you know to do the same thing. It could be the smallest act of kindness, like opening the door for somebody or giving somebody a hug that may look sad, preferably people that you know, not random people like at the grocery store, some stranger <laughs> things. Um, any idea of something that you could do to spread kindness? What do you think? If they don't have friends, you could play with them. <laughs> All right. Oakland, what do you think? Anything come to mind? <laughs> All right, so those are all really good ideas. All right, so now let's pray together, okay? Repeat after me. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Help us this week. Help us this week. And this year. And this year. To spread seeds. To spread seeds. Of your love. Of your love. To everyone. To everyone. We meet. We meet. We love you. We love you. Amen. Amen. So short. Thank you, Rachel and children, for that beautiful message. Now a song about the baptism of Jesus. Would you please stand as you're able as we sing number 252, When Jesus Came to Jordan. When Jesus came to Jordan to be baptized by John, he did not come for pardon, but as the sinless one. He came to share repentance with all who mourn their sins, to speak the vital sentence with which good news begins. Join us in our statement of faith today. It's up on the screen. 
Now, or you can turn to number 883 in your hymnal. Would you join me in this statement of faith? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come into Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. If I could go ahead and take a seat at this time. We'll continue our time of worship with the sharing of our prayers, sharing of our praises. This is a time where if you have something going on in your life and, and you need prayer, we encourage you to share that with us. And we'll be praying for you this week. Or if you have a praise, God's doing something real wonderful in your life, or make perhaps an answer to prayer, sharing that with us can increase us in our, our faith today. I have a, a praise. Glenn Ward. On the birth of granddaughter Ophelia Elizabeth Ward. Born January 3rd, 7 pounds, 6 ounces, to Amber Powell and Kyle Ward. Welcome by big brother Eli Ward and big sister Liz. Congratulations. You know, we left up Theo Heflin in prayer January 12th. He'll be going in for, for surgery. We ask you all be, be praying for him as he does that. Anyone else with a prayer or praise? I have a praise for all the travelers who have been assisted in that procedure. Excuse me, every member of our family. And then a prayer for Ed, who's down in the back for the last two days. Okay. If you don't have a praise, she's able to see all of her, her family over the holiday. Uh, but we lift up Ed, her, her husband, in, in prayer, who's not feeling good right now. Before I invite you all to, to join me in prayer, many of y'all saw, uh, anyone tune in to, to sports, you saw uh, how many came together over prayer with Jamar Hamlin and the injury he sustained, and you saw so many people just immediately go to God in prayer because there's some things only God can help us with, and, and we saw a powerful witness of that this week, and I'm so glad to hear that he is doing better, but I hope that that would encourage us and strengthen us in our prayers. Uh, this week. Would y'all join me together and let's go to God in prayer. Lord God Almighty, we are thankful that we have praises today. You are at work in our life. You are doing wonderful things and we recognize it and we proclaim it and we give you the credit for it, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank for all the healing, all the, the just the wonderful things you are doing, the ways that you bless us, Lord. But we also know everything's not the way it should be. So many people that we know are sick, are hurting, are in pain, have something wrong with them, and doctors are trying to figure it out still. Some are in nursing homes, Lord. Some are fighting cancer or other illnesses, Lord. And so we come before you today and we ask for healing and we ask for help. We ask for a peace and understanding that can only come from you, Lord. And as we love on those that we, we care for, help us to show your love to them, Lord. Help us to know what to say and what not to say. We also invite you in this space, Lord, and we ask that you would speak to us, that you would move among us, that your spirit would be felt, Lord. That here today we would know that we've encountered you through the words, through the songs, through our prayers, through others even, that we would know that you are here. And so, Lord, we come before you today, and also we know that you are a transforming God. And as we remember our, our baptisms and the power and the water that cleanses us, that claimed us and called us, 
through the water we are made one with Jesus in ministry and ministry to all the world. And we ask that as we take our tithes and our offerings, that you would multiply us so that we may build up communities filled with your hope and love and joy. In Jesus' name we ask this. Now I'd like to, as a continued time of our worship, let us give of our tithes and our offerings. We invite our ushers to come forward at this time.
would ask that those that are able, please stand for the reading of the Holy Scripture, please. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the, give, for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, this is a special day in the life of the church, the baptism of the Lord's Sunday. It's when we remember Jesus' baptism. We remember and reaffirm our own baptism, or, or receive an invitation for it. And if you've never been baptized before, it's a good time to consider being baptized. And so at this time, I'd like to invite you to, to join me in a prayer before we dig further into the Word. <coughs> Lord God Almighty, we thank you so much for all that you do and all that you've done. We thank you for the sending of your Son. We ask that you'd speak to us here today, that we would joyfully hear all that you're trying to tell us today, all that you want to get through to us today. And may we understand and hear you, Lord. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. And so while it is the baptism of the Lord Sunday, this morning we also find ourselves in a story. It is the grand story of Scripture contained here in the beginning of Mark's Gospel. See, a decision every good storyteller has to make is when to tell the story secret. Every story has a secret, and every storyteller has to decide to let the audience in on the secret early on or wait to surprise them at the end. Mystery writers often hold back their secret until the very last chapter of the book, keeping us eagerly turning the pages to find out who really poisoned the millionaire or who really shoved the colonel down the elevator shaft. The same is true of soap operas. You tune, tune in each week to see, will Sophia find true happiness <laughs> with Calvin, the chauffeur? And keep tuning in to find the secret. In the golden age of radio announcers would end their program by saying something like this tune in tomorrow for the next episode of the shadow in other words if you turn the page if you tune in tomorrow you'll learn the secret and then there are those stories where the storyteller reveals the secret early on and we, the audience, know the secret before many of the characters do, and we watch as they gradually discover the hidden secret that we already know. Oh, Grandma, what big eyes you have, <laughs> says innocent little Red Riding Hood. But we already know, don't we? The secret is that the destructive animal is already wearing her grandmother's clothing and is under the cover. Or take this tale in Princeton, New Jersey, about legendary scientist Albert Einstein, who was just walking down the road, but was mistaken. 
he was walking in front of a, a local inn and was mistaken for a bellboy. A woman who had just arrived in a luxury sedan ordered him to take her luggage up to her room. And according to the story, Einstein actually does it. And he carries the luggage up to her room. He receives a small tip and goes about his day to ponder the mysteries of the universe. And whether the story is true or not, it's delightful because from the beginning we know the secret that the woman doesn't know, that this disheveled looking man is one of the most celebrated intellectuals of all time. You see, some stories gain their power from us knowing the secret early on. And the Gospel of Mark is a lot like that. His secret is the identity of Jesus Christ. And in the very first sentence, Mark lifts the veil and tells us the secret when he says, this is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And that's the secret. Jesus is the Son of God. And this hidden truth is confirmed early on in our story, as we saw this morning. Jesus comes up out of the waters of baptism. And he sees the Holy Spirit descend upon him like a dove. And the voice of heaven breaks through like a piece of cloth in the sky. And you hear a voice, the voice of God the Father saying, proclaiming, you are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. But the story of Jesus seeing the Holy Spirit, and Je only Jesus sees the Holy Spirit. Only Jesus sees the dove. Only Jesus hears the Father's voice. It's still a secret to everybody else. And so God knows the secret, and Jesus knows the secret, and Mark has lit us in on it, so we know the secret. But it seems as if no one else in the gospel does know it. Or at least seems to know it. The authorities mistaken Jesus for a troublemaker. Some call him a madman. Some think he's the prophet Elijah. Even the twelve disciples are blind to the full truth of who Jesus is. And ironically, for most of Mark's gospel, only the demons recognize the full secret of who Jesus is. The thing is, Jesus doesn't really look like the Son of God, or at least what people expected the Son of God to look like. Kind of like that genius Albert Einstein carrying the heavy suitcases. Jesus doesn't look like the one people expected him to be. And one of those reasons we see for that is that Jesus suffered. Now the Son of God wouldn't, you wouldn't think the Son of God would experience something like that, would you? But our Gospels show us that Jesus, the Son of God, was also a suffering servant. And that's a hard secret to learn. And maybe that's something, maybe some of us can relate with that today. Not, perhaps not the suffering part, but the not looking the part. You love Jesus, but maybe you don't look like what people say a Christian looks like, or you don't talk the way... Christians are supposed to talk. You don't do the things people say Christians are supposed to do. Maybe you don't fit the mold. But you're here. And you are who you say you are. A believer. A follower of Jesus Christ. You don't have to fit the mold. And at the halfway point of our gospel, the disciples come really close to discovering the secret. As Jesus asks them, who do you say that I am? Who are you telling, what are you saying about me when you talk to others? And Peter, he gets so close. He says, you are the Christ. And he's right, and that's a big deal. But the question is, does Peter fully understand the secret? And the answer is no. Because Jesus immediately goes on to say, his whole secret. He reveals it all to the disciples. He says that he must suffer. He must be rejected. He must die. And Peter says, no, no, Jesus, we can't let that happen to you. And he is strongly rebuked by Jesus. Peter gets it in part, but he doesn't fully get it. And that's why Mark tells us the secret early on. 
Because when Jesus hangs on the cross and it seems all is lost, that's when Mark wants us to remember the secret that that there is the Son of God and this story isn't over yet. And when Jesus pitifully carries his cross down death row and it seems like no reasonable person in the world would point at that man and say, surely that's the one we've all been waiting for. It's at that moment we are to remember the secret. That there is the Son of God. This story isn't over yet. And when the most devout followers of God spit in Jesus' face and call him a blasphemer, Mark wants us to remember this is the Son of God. And when the Roman soldiers put a purple blanket on Jesus and a crown of thorns on his head, and they're filled with so much cruel laughter because they keep mockingly bowed down before him, they're laughing so hard their, their sides hurt. Mark wants us to remember the secret. And when they drove the monstrous nails through his flesh and taunted him to come down from the cross, Mark wants us to remember this is the Son of God. And there at the end, when it seems like it's all over, and the sky is terribly dark, and the air is filled with Jesus' death cry, and the temple curtain, like a cloth, is torn in two, we're supposed to remember when something else was torn like a cloth, and the sky tore open at Jesus' baptism. And the voice of God said, This is my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. And moments after Jesus dies on the cross, Mark wants us to remember the words of the centurion at the foot of the cross who says the secret that we've all known from the beginning. Truly this man was the Son of God. Here today we are reminded of the one who was rejected by so many is the one whom God is well pleased. And the one who was deserted by so many is the beloved Son of God. And the one who seemed helpless hanging on a cross is the one whom we shall have life through. And that's the secret revealed in Jesus' baptism. And it's the secret that all of us Christians share through our baptism. And in the waters of baptism, God is doing something wonderful. And God is actually the one inviting us to be baptized. Baptism is a participating in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ as a public statement of our faith, declaring to all that we belong to Jesus. In baptism, we renounce our sin. We affirm that we are new people in Christ, that as Christians, Sin no longer has control over our lives. And what do I mean by that? Yeah, we're still tempted. Yeah, we still do things that, that are wrong, but we're no longer controlled by it. We don't just recklessly do whatever we want. And if you're willing, the Holy Spirit will give you the ability to resist temptation. As one professor taught me, he said, sin remains, but it does not reign. It remains, but it doesn't get to reign anymore. And even though sin comes after us and it tries to bully us and it shouts at us and it whispers in our ear, we can say, I don't belong to you anymore, sin. You get lost. I've been born again in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And in our baptism, our identity is revealed. As Paul tells us, for you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united in Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. Baptism is this and so much more. And so in his autobiographical book, Creative Dislocation, Pastor Robert Brown remembered a day in 1960 when he participated in a Lutheran worship service in East Berlin only a short time before the Berlin Wall was built. There weren't that many people at church that day. Because in those days, church attendance was viewed with suspicion by the state, and the East German Republic had developed secular alternatives to replace all of the rituals of the church. But nonetheless, there was a young couple in the service that day, presenting their child for baptism. And 
like I said, this is a pastor retelling this story and what he observed, and he was amazed by that. And he wondered why. Why would they jeopardize their future and their child's future by insisting on this ancient ritual of baptism when a secular alternative is readily and painlessly available? Why would they do that? And here Pastor Brown writes his answer. And he says, the couple does not have to answer my question. The very act of bringing their baby to church is a public statement of their priority. And they engage in this significant risk. Pardon me. <clears throat> Let's start that over. They engage in this significant risk because of their faith. And in the face of their quiet public courage, he says that he feels unworthy. You see, this couple knew the secret about their child that no fear, fear nor tyranny could take away from them, that this is a child of God. And the same goes for each and every one of us who have ever been baptized or ever will be baptized. You accept your place <clears throat> as a child of God, and God does something to you, and you're never the same afterward. Because the God of the universe says to each and every one of us, you are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter, my very own. And in you I am pleased. I have placed you here and called you here to be my own. And I delight in you. And God believes that about us. And we should believe it too. And so here today I invite you to remember your baptism and be thankful. Here today I invite you to reaffirm your baptism. And continue to walk in the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to join me in a prayer at this time. <clears throat> Lord God Almighty, we come before you today and we've talked about baptism and your baptism and talked about the how you are the Son of God and how throughout the Gospel of, of Mark, how it is revealed at the very beginning. Help us to believe it too. That you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And you have come here and have done the most wonderful thing for us. And you invite us all to baptism. And here today, we remember and we reaffirm the vows we made when we were baptized. And so, Lord, we continue to invite you into our lives. Give us the, help us to claim our baptism, Lord, that when temptation comes our way, we would turn to you and remember. And so, Lord, here today, we invite you in this faith. And we ask for your great help. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> At this time you can turn to page 50 in your hymnal. <clears throat> I just want to be clear that <clears throat> it's not a rebaptism; it's a remembering your baptism. Now we better see.
Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, if y'all saw Brother Jim had fallen out of his chair and they're going to see if he's okay, and I invite y'all to join me in a prayer for him. And Lord God Almighty, we come before you today and we lift up Brother Jim and we ask that he would be okay, that everything <clears throat> in his body would be all right, and we ask that as they, they care for him and, and, and go through the procedure to see if he's all right, Lord, we, we just ask uh, for any healing that is needed in his body to help him, Lord, and may he be in the, the best hands at this time. And so, Lord God Almighty, we ask this in your precious name. Amen. <clears throat> and so if you'd like to participate in, in this uh, part of the service, I invite you to turn to page 50 in your hymnal. And we will take our baptismal vows and remember them and reaffirm them. And then you'll be invited, if you like, to take that next step and to remember your baptism, reaffirm it, and I'll make the sign of the cross on your forehead or on the back of your hand, whatever you prefer, and then the railing will be open on both sides if you like to pray there, too. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, you are initiated in Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift, offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. And so on behalf of the church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? Amen. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to the people of all ages, nations, and races? And according to the grace given to you, Will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? I will. And so let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in the Fa God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. And when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children, through their children, you brought them through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus. Nurtured in the water of a womb, he was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his, suffer or his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare Christ's word. Glory to God. And pour out your Holy Spirit 
and by this gift of water call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins, and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. And at this point in the service, you'll be invited to come forward and uh, reaffirm your baptism. And I'll invite you to make one single line. But we're going to invite the choir first, and, um, and then afterward we'll invite everyone else.
And may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Let us rejoice in the faithfulness of our covenant. We give thanks for all that God has already given us. As members of the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church. Our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. That in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. As our response to the blessings we've experienced this morning, let's join together in singing, O oh, Jesus, I Have Promised, number 396. <clears throat> go out into the world, empowered by the Holy Spirit, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and mind, and strength. Amen. Amen.